Welcome back to UNX Fast Forward, your daily dose of everything Ninja. I'm Christy Ganji. And I'm Ethan Swanson. And right now, our first major event is done. That means there are two more major events for our UNX season to find our top eight men and women to make their way to the championship event on February 15th. Yeah, and starting off really well on the season standings, Kylie Hughes, Elena Borges, and Barclay Stockett in the top three for the women. On top of that, they're already qualified for the second major event. So they don't have to go through the four qualifiers like a lot of other athletes do to get back to the second major. And on the men's side, our top three is Daniel Gill, Jake Murray, and Drew Dreschel. Yeah, and so Daniel Gill and Drew Dreschel are season guaranteed athletes, which means Caleb Bergstrom and Donovan Matoyer also bump up into the guaranteed spots for the second major, which we wanted to do because of performance based. We wanted those athletes who performed well at each major to be guaranteed to the next one who earned that right to get there. Right, it's all about finding the best athletes to compete in each major and the best athletes to get to the championship. So in our minds, you prove yourself you take a top three qualifying spot in the major event boom you're into the next major yeah absolutely and then if you get to the championship if you're in that top eight men top eight women to get to the championship next season if you perform well in the championship you're guaranteed for that season right so there's a lot on the line in getting back to the championship and making sure that you earn a ticket to every single major event for next year based on performance yeah but now to get into the second major if you are not one of those names we just mentioned the open qualifiers are going to reset so now that's your path to get into the second major right we have four more qualifiers before that second major event and i think the game has changed you know we had our first round of qualifiers first major and we had a ton of amazing athletes competing but i think a lot of other athletes that didn't compete saw it and, and we're now are very excited so we already have a bunch of new names that are powerful elite athletes that are signing up for these competitions I think it's gonna make it way more difficult to just get to the major let alone <laughs> take a top three spot there or make it to the championship yeah I mean the open qualifier is such stacked competition I mean we saw it in the first round but you have to be in the top three of those open qualifiers that is not a lot of spots to get into the major no it is not and so unfortunately I think what it's gonna mean is some of the athletes from the first major event will not be returning because they're gonna be everyone else is vying for that spot I mean I'm not gonna say that they're not gonna return because those they're strong athletes and they prove themselves once, but now they got to do it again. Yeah. Well, I, I just think that's the case. Like, we're not going to have the same field of athletes. It's just I don't think it's, there's any chance it happens because there's so many other strong athletes, so many other close calls, people that just barely missed the cut, couldn't make it to events. It's going to be it's going to be a competition. <laughs> so, okay, who, who do you think is going to come back? So I think uh, first let's talk about athletes who are at the first major. And I think definitely one who's coming back almost certainly is Michael Torres. First off, he performed really well in the major event, made it to the last obstacle multiple times and just burned out. But also the way he got to the major by taking first place, other than Drew Dreschel, who's already guaranteed for the season, taking first place in our first U.S. qualifier in a stacked field of athletes. You got to think he's coming back, right? Yeah, I mean, I got to look at Michael Torres, look at his season so far. And uh, he looked at me after he was done at the major, and he's like, I'm going to the next qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think the motivation is there, the determination. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna get back. But then I want to bring up a pair, actually. I'm uh, going with two right here, Joe Meisner and Najee Richardson. One because Joe, our only finisher from that amazing alternate routes right. qualifier, um, and so I think Joe has the strength. I think he's gonna come back. We've seen him perform consistently. And then his training partner, Najee. I think the two of them, they're gonna push each other and get there together. Yeah, and you know, I mean. And those guys are East Coasters, and the East Coast is already so difficult. And Torres is signed up for the East Coast competition, <laughs> but another East Coaster, Joe Morovsky. He missed out, and he competed in the qualifier. He didn't make it to the major last time. He, he uh, slipped. You, he, you, he did slip. You gotta think he's going to do it. He's not the type of athlete that goes, ah, you know, I messed up, whatever. He's the type of athlete that goes, that's never gonna happen again. <laughs> and then it doesn't. Lightning never strikes twice <laughs> in the same spot, so I don't expect Joe to, to, to go out early again on a silly mistake. Yeah, another athlete who wants it so bad is Jamie Ron. And I've seen he's already signed up for multiple qualifiers, just making sure he's got the opportunities to get to the major. And he's so, so good. Yeah, Jamie's so consistent. We've seen it on American Ninja Warrior where he's, you know, consistently finishing pretty well, finishing city finals courses. Um, and, you know, we saw it in the first half of the open qualifiers where he signed up for multiple qualifiers, didn't quite get in, but I think the determination is there. I think he's got a little chip on his shoulder from not being able to get in in the first yep. round. 
I agree. I think he's getting in. Well, a couple of small, it always comes down to small mistakes, but for him, just a couple of small mistakes is, you know, missing the trapeze drops at Ultimate Ninjas and then getting stuck on Spin the Cat at Ninja Quest. But then once he got through that, he blazed through the rest of the course and just timed out. Yeah, and you know, I want to go with a name uh, of somebody who was in our major one event, but who also has a lot of that dedication, trains at the same gym as Jamie Ron, Sam Folsom. We saw him take fourth place at the Naperville Qualifier, just barely failed the last obstacle, and then we saw him go down to Ninja Quest, do his thing, get into the major. So I think he's another athlete that's he's dedicated, he wants to get in, and he's proven himself. Yeah, I mean, you look at that, the consistency of taking, uh, you know, just missing out by one qualifying spot and then qualifying in second place, it's hard hard to be more consistent than that, you know? And when you look at his major performance, the guy is blazing fast. He fast. got to the flying doors at 39 seconds, I believe, and it was amazing. Yeah, it was very fast. <laughs> but another guy who's known for his speed, who was in the first major, Kyle Soderman. Unfortunately, you know, a big mistake on the second obstacle in the semifinals, but he was also the first finisher ever on a uh, on a UNX course in the in the first qualifier and he ran really early it's he's just so good I think he's you know same as Joe is like he's kind of gonna go nope that's not gonna happen again I'm not only getting back but I'm gonna crush it in the major I think he's gonna be back yeah I gotta think that he is not gonna sleep well after that first major and he is gonna be training a lot yep so uh, two athletes that are from Texas that are going to be competing that didn't compete in the first round are the, the big dog and the big the cat. The big dog and the big cat. <laughs> yeah. Jody Avila and Karsten Williams are going to be competing in Austin Ninjas, and they are so amazing. It so will amazing. be raining cats and dogs out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I expect that both those guys will be making their way to the uh, the second major event. Uh, they're just so good, and especially Karsten coming off such an amazing year on American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, Karsten finished stage one for the first time, made it all the way to stage three on American yeah. Ninja Warrior this year. Passed the cliffhanger. Amazing. Better than I could say for Better myself. than I could say for myself. <laughs> yeah. um, but a great season that he's had, and I think he carries that momentum. Um, and you're right, I think those two as competitors are phenomenal, and I expect to see them into the major. Yeah, me too. Now, this athlete, I think, Honestly, he is almost the most sure thing to make their way to the, make his way to the major. Adam Rail. He didn't compete in the first round of qualifiers. I've heard he may compete in the second round. And if he competes, watch out everybody else. When you talk about speed, oh, when you talk about speed, you can't leave Adam Rail out of the conversation. He is the conversation. <laughs> well, he just came off of Bromley Farm uh, defending his title and winning it again. And that's a speed competition. He's he's so dialed in. And I think also when it comes to running a course multiple times, he's able to perfect courses better than almost any other athlete yeah no he's he's phenomenal especially you know I think the multiple course runs is gonna favor him if he gets to the major yep and now I do want to bring up a young gun who didn't compete in the first round and is widely known in the ninja community as one of the best not only younger athletes but just one of the best athletes Caden Lebsack. He is so strong. Yeah, he's, what is he, 13 years old? And, I mean, he can do things that should, are, like, should be impossible. I've seen him doing, like, one-arm uh, pull-ups on really difficult holds, and I just watch him go, all right, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be competing, and he is such an impressive athlete. I can't wait to see how he competes. I mean, and not only just these athletes that we talked about, but there's so many other athletes that are amazing that are going to be competing. Um, I am, I'm just so excited because I feel like, you know, people are more excited about competing in UNX in the second round, and it's just going to bring up the field of competition even greater, and it was already at a pretty great spot. Yeah, I mean, I expect to see Connor Galvin come back. I expect to see Thomas Stillings. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Lucas Real we've seen on the registration. Yep. Um, so it's just there's so many big competitors. It's a scary thing. It's a very scary thing, and if you're going Going to be competing at those open qualifiers you should be ready for some fierce competition but then let's go ahead and look at the women's side of things because there's no lack of competition on that side either no there is not in the first one i want to bring up already you know qualified for the second major jesse labreck i have never seen that happen ever to jesse i've never seen her perform like that and you know that she's thinking that is I am going to crush this course so hard next time that people forget that that ever, ha ever happened. Yeah, she definitely is not happy about that performance. You know, she's an athlete. You know, she's disappointed about it. And she, ha you know, mentally she's moving on. She's not going to think about it. And she's gonna, just going to get ready to crush the next one. Mm -hmm. Another really, really.
really powerful woman who was in the first major, Casey Rothschild, who dominated at alternate routes. It wasn't even close. You know, I'm, I'm really expecting her to put up another performance like that in the qualifiers, earn her way back to the major, and then do really well in the major event. I don't know what happened. I think she just had a couple mental errors, but. Yeah, when you look at Casey's performance in the major, she just missed the grab on the bookend, and you could just see it just, it just wasn't lined up right. But had she caught that, I mean, she was looking really strong. And so yeah. definitely an athlete I expect to come back. And then another one that I expect to be there again is Maggie Owen, 15 years old. But we saw her take fourth place in the major. Right. So, so strong. And she made it to the put a ring on it every single time she ran. Yeah, I mean, we got we have to talk about the youth athletes and Maggie Owen being a very powerful one. Honestly, I, I got to, you know, wonder about her, her mindset after coming out and missing qualifying for the second major by one spot. That's got to hurt. It's got to hurt, but I think it also has to be super motivating. I mean, you're looking at it saying like, okay, I, I'm in fourth place. I have a lot of points for the major, and so sure. I need to get back. And yeah. I think that's that's a motivating factor that's going to push her to qualify. And on top of that, you look at her UNX qualifier at Ultimate Ninjas. She took first place by a long shot. She made it further on the course than anybody else by an entire obstacle on the women's side. So you got to think she's got a pretty good chance of doing it again. Yeah, and then another one who I think is going to come back is Rachel Brown. Oh. Oh, God, yes. Rachel, yeah. such a strong competitor. You know, she's been competing with the pros for so long since she was just a, a little kid, which she, to me, she's still little. I mean, she's 17 years old, but um, I definitely expect her to come back. Yeah, for sure. Another youth athlete, Olivia Calasano. She's already signed up for one of the, uh, yes. one of the U.S. qualifiers, and she took fifth place at the major on the biggest stage. You know, um, A.W. Junior, she's got the experience on big stages. You, you got to think she's coming back. Yeah, absolutely. And then another one who I've, I saw signed up, Jane Greenbaum, is another oh, younger competitor. No. <laughs> but, you know, Jane and Rachel kind of have, have this friendship. Um, it goes back a long way, and the, the two compete together, they train together. And so um, I think Jane is going to perform really well and punch that ticket to the major as a, as a new competitor that we'll see. Yeah, and, and so getting into the newer competitors too, the East Coast is stacked, right? And we already talked about some East Coasters. You talked about Jane and Casey Rothschild. we got to talk about Abby Clark, and she's a &W veteran. She's very, very strong. She trains out there with Joe Capo and a bunch of the beasts out there, and she, I, I would expect her to make her way to the major. Yeah, Abby, you know, we've seen her perform really well and with her boyfriend, Joe, who we didn't mention, who we, you know, could easily qualify on the men's side of things. The two train together. And so, you know, coming from a relationship where I know you train together, you push each other, um, I think it just makes you stronger together. And I definitely expect to see her do really well. Mm -hmm. Now switching gears a little bit to some of the more experienced veteran athletes, Maddie Howard, uh, she's going to be competing. And, uh, and I'm really excited because she had a breakout year this year. Breakout rookie season oh man that was unbelievable so her to compete here i think she she just looks so calm and collected under pressure yeah and she's a former gymnast she ha has that gymnastics background um and so you know we we see a lot of times with ninja gymnastics translates really really well and especially with the major we had a lot of big high flying obstacles and so um you know we'll see if she can punch a ticket in the qualifiers yep another athlete with great air awareness tiana weberly she didn't qualify for the first major but she was dealing with an injury i know she's getting healthier hoping she competes again and makes her way to the second major because I think she's she's one of the most powerful one of the strongest women's athletes out there right now and she I think is going to earn her spot in the second major yeah I mean you got to think with her experience um you know and not and coming off the injury hopefully she's healed fully um and she's at her full strength but Tiana at her full strength there's no doubt in my mind that she's going to come to the to the second major yeah I mean, there, there are so many athletes on the women's side that are so strong that we didn't see compete. You know, I'm hoping that we see Alyssa Beard, hoping we see Michelle Warnke, who was injured during the uh, injured her knee, I think, during the first uh, round of qualifiers. But, you know, there's so many amazing women's athletes that are out there that, you know, we're hoping uh, show up in the qualifiers and in the major. Yeah, and we'll just have to wait and see. But, um, you know, we've got all that action coming up. We've got four more open qualifiers coming up to get into yes. the second major. We're going to be covering it all here on Fast Forward. Um, and, yeah, the first stop is going to be center court out in New Jersey. And we said, you know, Michael Torres is going to be competing there. But we're going to be going over all the athletes, and we're going to be doing our predictions and getting back into the rhythm for the open qualifiers. Right, and tomorrow we're actually going to go over all the four qualifiers and talk about who's designing the courses, the mad men and mad women behind the <laughs> 
course design and what we can expect, what we're expecting from those courses and athletes we think are going to be in those regions. And we'll go over all that tomorrow on UNX Fast Forward. And until then, I'm Ethan Swanson. And I'm Chris Ganji, and we'll see you next time.